Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. The trust triangle is trying to teach us tatuamasi, divinity you are. In actuality, the you are is not relevant. There is only divinity. There's no you. If there's no you, then there's no are. There is only divinity. Now, how many of us can relate to that? How many of us feel that? Few. Very few. How? How can this become our experience, how can this become more common to divinize who you feel like you are right here, right now? To divinize the mind, the intellect, the ego, so that you, the sense of individuality, merges with infinity. The fulfillment of tatuamasi is tat, divinity. Bhagavad Gita's chapter 8. Many associate this with dying. If that's the case, the implication is still on how to live. Dying is a tool that is being used to teach. It is about living. The end of this chapter, Sri Krishna is sharing a way to remember while we're living him. Remembering infinity. He shares a visual. The visual is, you can either live for the path of light. How do you know that? You feel lighter. A lighter carbon footprint. A lighter heart. Or you can live for the path of darkness. How do you know this? You feel darker. More taking. More making matters personal. Recently, I've given you two applications which I described as being very personal. The first was for you to calculate all of the valuables in your life. And the second, accentuating this, to compare this to all of the remembrance you have offered in your life. Remembrance of divinity. Typically, this is described as japa. Another word for Bhagavad Gita is smriti. Smriti means that which is to be remembered. So I asked you to compare what you have earned, and what you have remembered. 
and very few shared their reflections because I think you realize that there's a huge gap between earned and offered. Let me share another stark reflection for everyone. Imagine you were given a dollar for every time you remembered Sri Krishna. Every time you offered japa, you were given a dollar. Would you remember him more then? Is that why we engage in meaningful mornings in Bhagavad Gita? These kinds of reflections, which are really <coughs> tests, they prove to us that we are following the path of darkness. They show to us that we are living for valuables instead of values. Yesterday, when I was driving back from my soccer game, our game was uh, cut short because of lightning. And I was observing all of the players and how frustrated they were because they very much like to play soccer. And so I was reflecting on boredom. If you are living for that which is material oriented, like a full soccer game or a dollar, or an expectation, you will feel bored. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the day after that. Boredom is a warning sign that you are living for that which is material and not immaterial. You are living the path of darkness and not the path of light. Warning signs we tend to interpret as being negative. Conversely, we should be grateful for warning signs. With such warning signs, we can change. Change towards, and the word Sri Krishna uses in verse 26, is Shashwata. Shashwata means forever. Living a life of dependence goes on forever. And so I should change this to living a life of independence. This is a different forever. This is an absolute forever. Verse 27, Sri Krishna is completing his thoughts, which are to become our thoughts. Tava eva vidya, tava eva dravina. Right now I'm holding on to valuables. By letting go of valuables, I will hold on to the knowledge that is yours. This will become my knowledge. Naite sriti parta janan, yogi muhyati kaschana. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu, yoga yukto bhavarjuna. Partha. Your name is Partha. Ete sriti janan. By knowing these paths, the path of darkness, the path of light. Throughout Srimad Bhagavad Gita, there are paths, paths that are shared. In a psychological sense, this would be like a framework. With a map, there's this path and that path. So this is a framework. A framework is to be remembered. And if this is to be remembered, then this is to be practiced also. So sharing again, 
why Srimad Bhagavad Gita is amazing is notions like paths are actually a framework. Remember the framework so that you can practice the framework. Yogi, the one who is practicing yoga, na muhyati kashchana, is never deluded. That's the translation. Here is the significant application. There are not three paths. Moon, sun, beyond. There are not even two paths. Moon, sun. There is only, sorry, there's not even two paths. Moon, beyond. There is only one path. Beyond. Because the path of the moon and the path of the sun both take forever. It is only the path beyond is beyond notions of space and time. Yesterday I had a meeting after my soccer game. I had a meeting with our young adults and evolving adults in our Chinmai Mission Washington Center. In this meeting, I highlighted to all of them about how much they have been given in their lives, courtesy of Puja Swami Chinmayananda. They have been given Chinmaya, knowledge of who they are. And so, giving back in the form of seva is not an option. Delusion is when you feel that you have a choice to walk this, this, or this path. Confidence is when you know there's no moon path, there's no sun path, there's only the beyond path. For all of those young adults and evolving adults, serving must not be a choice. If it's choice-based, it's called volunteering. I choose this, I don't choose this. But when one feels this is not a choice, this is how I have to live my life, that's called serving. That's the beyond path. Tasmat. Those are important words for us, a conclusion, um, uh, an emphasis. Sarveshu kaleshu. Following the beyond path, sarveshu means in all. And this chapter is very much about time, so kaleshu. To be practiced in all times. As you're living, as you're dying. This morning I was interacting with a seeker who's physically <laughs> not well right now, and she felt so bad about this. So much of what she's learning in meaningful mornings, she was unable to remember because she was feeling her sickness. And I shared with her, when you're physically unwell, lighten uh, how you engage in sadhana. Lighten this. Instead of reading a book, lie down and engage in japa. That's just an example. She also shared with me that her professional life is very demanding. And so she forgets what is shared in Meaningful Mornings in Bhagavad Gita. So I shared with her, a few times in the day, pause for five minutes. Look at a verse. Remember one of these lines. Think of your own reflection. Being sick cannot be an excuse. Having demands as a professional or a parent cannot be an excuse. Sarveshu kaleshu. Yoga yukto bhava arjuna. Arjuna, bhava, practice, feel, yoga yukta, that you are engaged in this singular path 
this singular purpose of life. Final reflection. Next chapter is one of the most beautiful verses of Bhagavad Gita, where Sri Krishna shares yoga, kshemam, vahami, aham. All that you need in your life, I will facilitate that for you. So then the most direct way of living is to need Sri Krishna because he'll facilitate all else. Why live a life of valuables? Why even live a life of values? Surrender. Bhakti means surrender, correct? That's what we're focusing on. Even surrender your mind, intellect, ego that's trying to become virtuous. Choice is best implemented where you have no choice. Choose to surrender your choice. From inspiration to application, we debriefed on your application already, comparing earned and offered. I share these tests with you. You are a seeker so that we can't plead ignorance. If today and tomorrow and the rest of your life, if you're still living for earning than offering, that's not ignorance, that's apathy then. Your application <laughs> leading to Monday, there is a Canadian band that sings a really powerful song. The band's name is The Trues. T-R-E-W-S. And the song is called Tired of Waiting. I want you to listen to this many times with the bhava, bhava arjuna, with the Prince Arjuna feel that you're tired of waiting to be joyous. Make this song your own song. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be joyous.